till I am a soul on fire. I want his heart. Uh, I want his passion, and I hope that you do as well, because um, if we don't have passion and we don't have the heart of God, we're going to miss the whole thing. He hasn't called us to be religious. He's called us to be in a relationship, something that is passionate uh, and something that's going to make a difference in the world that we live in. And so I am praying that today there is a fire that's lit inside of you that is going to cause you to live with passion and have his heart, uh, not only for this household, uh, but also his heart for just people in general. Because let me tell you, it's always about people. It's always been about people. It's not about skyscrapers, and it's not about cars, and it's not about all the things that make up the city, but it's about the people. Um, it's not about the steeples. It's not about the chairs. It's not about our great programs. It's not about the light show. It's not about the coffee and donuts. It's not about any of those things. It's about his, oh, come on, somebody. Try that again. It's about his, it's about his people. And if we're not about his heart, we won't be about his people. We've got to have a heart for the things that God has a heart for. God is building a house, and he's using his people. And he, he's calling, I believe with all of my heart, he is calling for a remnant to rise up and walk in victory. To rise up, he's calling that remnant. What does remnant mean? Remnant means that which remains of an original body or substance. God's remnant people are, they are very aware that they have been saved by grace and not by anything that they have done on their own merit. You did not do anything to make it to the kingdom. But it was God who loved you and came searching for you and sent Jesus to die on the cross for you because he loves you. Romans 11.5 says this, so, to pre, so too at the present time there is a remnant chosen by grace. The remnant are a people of unshakable integrity who love truth and are totally honest. That doesn't mean that we always make the greatest decisions. Sometimes we make wrong decisions. But we have a desire to know real truth and to speak truth and to become more like him. And as we become more like Jesus, more truth is going to come out of our life. Zephaniah 3, 13 says this, The remnant of Israel will do no wrong. They will never tell lies or deceive one another. They will eat and sleep in safety, and no one will make them afraid. How many know that you are also part of God's chosen, that you were adopted into this thing. And if you're adopted into the kingdom, that means God has the same blessing for you. And he wants to use you in the same way. He wants you to know that we shouldn't be deceiving one another. We shouldn't be lying to no one. The, the remnant is going to treat each other well. There is a world that sometimes perceives the church as a place that doesn't necessarily treat each other well. But the scripture says they will know us by our what? By our love. So how do we have a heart for the house? We have to have a true love for God. We have to have a love for his church. We have to love his world. I don't know, I think it would be a great place if we never deceived one another in here. Come on. How many think that would be a great place to exist? No deception. That we were just honest with one another. That we didn't play games when we came in on Sunday morning. That, that we, we preferred one another in brotherly and sisterly love. That if you have something you're struggling with, that this could be a place that anyone could come and be healed. And the heart that might be broken or bruised or hurt or have walls those things could be torn down and the heart could be restored once again. Let this be a place where anyone can come and find healing. They will eat and sleep in safety and no one will make them afraid. That's the remnant. 
I want us to be a place where we can have joy and not be afraid. No one will make you afraid. You do not have to walk in fear, for perfect love casts out what? Fear, right? All fear. And who is perfect love? Jesus. So this must be a house where Jesus is present all the time. This is not about any other type of thing. This is not about, I mean, we may talk about things that could help you. Primarily, that's Scripture. But this will not be a self-help church because it doesn't, in the end, get you anywhere. What gets you somewhere is the Scripture, which is the answer to everything. Tony Robbins, how many read the, uh, the recent thing that happened with Tony? How many know who Tony Robbins is? I was thinking about just having him in to speak to our people. I think it could help us somehow. I, I, because I think if we could all just somehow, after the end of a service, go out into the parking lot and walk on coals, somehow that would lead us to our destinies. At least that's what I read. And, and they had a bunch of people walking. Uh, apparently that's a thing for them. They, they have a bunch of people walk on hot coals. And, and because that helps them to move into their destiny and their future. And it, it removes every barrier. It also removes the skin off of your feet. I think they had, I can't remember how many they sent to the hospital or the ambulances showed up because 20 or 30 of them, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of people that walked on it. They're just crazy. I mean, why do that? Why pay someone, literally, they paid him between $600 and $2,000 to be a part of a seminar that ended in walking on hot coals? Really, folks? Really? Is that what we've come to? That's, that's not how we find fulfillment. That's not how we move into our destiny. We move into our destiny because God has a plan for you and me. There's a remnant that he wants to bless. As you know, we went through a, a time of prayer and fasting, asking God what he would do with this church. And immediately uh, following that time of fasting and prayer, we were out in uh, California at this event, Azusa Now. Um, and some very interesting things took place, and, and it was it was around a word that God had put in my heart uh, some time ago, but then brought it back to me in this word of knowledge that I was given that talked about a remnant. Uh, Pastor Jordan, Pastor West, would you come? They actually didn't know I was going to do this today. I just told them a few minutes ago. <laughs> but as I was praying over the service, I felt like this is where God was leading, that we needed to understand what God was calling us to as a people, as a body. And, uh, and it was really interesting that, that God confirmed once again what I, I feel like is another supernatural event around the word remnant. And, uh, and I had felt for some time, I have been in Des Moines now for, uh, well, since my twins were born, so it's 15 years. Uh, 13 years ago, we started a church called House of Freedom, and we were believing that God was going to do some major things with unity of the body and, and through uh, young families and, and, and everyone in the church not being divided but being united. And we, we really believed God was going to set us up for something incredible in the city, and it, it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. And, and then... 13 years later, today, I find myself here with you and know that God has something he's birthing, in this, and I believe in the supernatural, that he's going to birth that's going to bring us together in a way that we could not imagine, and it's going to begin to move us forward. And the revelation that, that really came to us, it was pretty much the day after um, we had been to the Azusa Now. We started talking about remnant. And Jordan, what did, what did you say that God kind of began to speak to you that, or he had started this a little earlier right after you arrived? Yeah, so about, about a year ago, um, you know, my wife and I just, we made it uh, just a priority to be, to be in prayer for our church uh, uh, during the season uh, our church was in. And 
I know some of you remember we had uh, prayer meetings, you know, on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it was one of those, I think, Tuesdays, I was uh, uh, just one of the few there and, and praying to the Lord, and I just really felt like the Lord clearly speak to me that he was protecting and setting apart um, a remnant in the belly of our church, and that uh, when when the proper time came, he would birth it, and it would be something special uh, in, in bless our city, and so that's, um, so, you know, for, for several months, that's been kind of my go-to prayer for our church, is that, is that he would continue to protect and to set apart a remnant, that there would be a people set apart here in our city, and that, that when it was full term, when it was ready to go, that God would birth it, and it would be something special. So. And, and I thought that was interesting, because he hadn't shared that with me before, and then we started talking about remnant, and he began to share this word that he felt like God had given him. And then, uh, Pastor West, and I'm not sure when this actually happened for you, but you can bring clarification to that. But then God gave you a revelation on that. Okay, yeah. So, so the context for me was going to Azusa. As you guys can imagine, Azusa was like a little bit out of, out of my wheelhouse. Um, but I get there the day that we're, we're getting ready to go to the Azusa conference the next day. And I remember just having like, I don't know if you guys do this, but just having like one of those really honest prayers with God. Where I was just, I just kind of came to him and was like, God, this last year has been hard. And, and it's been difficult. And I feel like me and my wife haven't even got a chance to breathe. I feel like my wife's exhausted. I feel like I'm exhausted. And then this was the word that I used. I, I said, I feel like I'm injured. I feel like I'm doing ministry injured. And, and so I prayed that prayer. There's more to it, but I, but I prayed that prayer. And the next day we go to Azusa, and they're singing, and, and they do this song called King of My Heart, which talks about God is good, God is good, God is good. And out of nowhere, all of a sudden I hear Micah 4, 6 in my head, which uh, Micah's not usually my go-to book, um, nor does that happen to me. Like, I don't have, like, Scripture just pop into my head. Supernatural. Yeah, it was a little bit supernatural. Uh, in fact, it was uh, it was uncomfortable enough for me that I didn't even I didn't even look it up right away, uh, because it was so outside of of what I would normally experience. And sometime later, I I, I open up my Bible and I, I go to Micah four six, and it says this. It says, "On that day, this is the Lord's declaration." I will assemble the lame and I will gather the scattered, those that have been injured. Man, don't tell me God doesn't love you. Are you kidding me? He says, I will gather those that have been injured. I will make them into a remnant. Those far removed into a strong nation. Then the Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from this time on and forever. So then obviously I come to Brett. Yeah. And this is so I'm like, this is big for me. This is not normal for me. Right. And, uh, and so immediately following. But it's normal, pretty normal for me. <laughs> pray for him, folks. Just pray. He needs all the prayer he can get. But we begin to discuss this, and, and Jordan shares that Lord had given him a revelation on the word remnant. And then Wes says, you're not going to believe this, that God just dropped this scripture into my, into my heart during this event. And he read it, and, and it, again, confirmed the word remnant. Mm. And then I said, well, guys, you need to, to hear this, because the word that God gave me, uh, the prophetic word that we had talked about last week, um, was in Genesis 45, 4 through 8. And it says this, so Joseph said to his brothers, um, come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will neither be plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. Now, I don't know about you, but that's another one of those uh, cases where there is no possible way that could be coincidence, that God would speak to all three of us individually on the word remnant out of different places. As we came together and began to share that, uh, we realized that revelation. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, 
so we're on the, the, the plane ride home. We get home at uh, 2 o'clock one, or about 1 o'clock in the morning, I think. Uh, and I had forgotten. I was planning on sleeping in the next morning because I was exhausted from the trip. And then I realized I was supposed to be at the Capitol building that morning. And so uh, I got up and, and headed to the Capitol that morning, and we were going to uh, begin to pray over uh, just, just the House of Representatives and, and our senators and just, just the people there. We wanted to lay a foundation of prayer there. And the gentleman that was heading up that facilitation, he brought us together that morning. And the first thing he says when he begins to share with us, he said, it's amazing to see what God is doing in the state and how he's giving us favor to begin to pray and serve well. And he said, I believe that God is raising up a remnant of churches. I'm like, no, you did not just say that. It's impossible. Yet it's possible that God could raise up a remnant of people, remnant of churches that he could uh, energize and revive and fill their heart with his heart. You are the church. And wherever you've come from and whatever your situation, I believe that he's raising up a remnant that's going to walk in and see God do things that we haven't seen before, and it's going to be better than ever. Uh, Austin, would you come? So, so uh, I think it was the following Wednesday, maybe, maybe, maybe the next day, because I got back, I think we got back on uh, early Tuesday morning, Wednesday, we're getting ready for service, and, and I don't know, you and I had a chance to just sit down, we were just chatting, and, and I was like, man, you got to hear this thing that God did, we were talking about the remnant, I explained the whole thing to him, right? This isn't just about this sermon, I didn't just come up with this just now, okay, I just wanted to confirm that. Uh, I was explaining to you this thing that had happened in regards to the word remnant and um, what we felt like that meant for this church and how he was going to raise up a people and, and, and restore a people and, and strengthen us and move us into the future and that God wanted to do something special here. And then you said, I suppose I need to tell you this. And so <laughs> go ahead and tell them what you told me. So I had had a... I'd had a dream. Um, well, my wife and I, we, we started coming here in February to make New Point our home. And uh, not just like a week or two after that, I had a dream. And I felt like it was very specific for another couple in the church. But as I, as I shared that dream with them, uh, they told me, like, you need to tell Pastor Brett that because I think it has, like, huge significance for New Point Church. And so that's when I decided, after having the conversation with Brett, uh, after you came back from Azusa, that that's when I needed to share that dream with you. And the dream went, my wife and I were walking um, around this, this building, and it was a, a complex, like a apartment complex, um, but it had a, a commons area in the inside of it. But as we were walking uh, around this complex, we were trying to find a party we had been invited to, and it was, it was in this complex. We noticed that um, the building was just... It was an amazing building, uh, something very attractive about it. Everything was, was very nice and well done. Uh, the landscaping was, was very, I mean, everything about it was just was impeccable. I mean, it was just, it was just a super attractive building. And, and all the people that were around the building, that lived in the, within the building, they were coming out on their patios and stuff. We just noticed that everybody looked like they were uh, just very, like, like prosperous, not just, not just, like, financially, but, like, healthy and well taken care of and full of joy and peace. There's just something uh, just very good about this place. And as we go inside, we're uh, meeting with, uh, it's, so it's Mike and Linnell Nelson is the couple that uh, I felt the dream was very specific to, but um, they, were, they started introducing us to all the people that were at this party. And um, as they were introducing us, uh, it was a lot of younger people, um, but as they would introduce us to each person, they would say, and, and this person, um, their, their parents were um, giants in this ministry and did awesome things for God's kingdom. And this person, their parents were, um, you know, the pastors of this church, and they just did awesome things for this kingdom. And um, we, we uh, went outside the building to go get some food from um, outside the building. As we go outside these doors, there was... Um, it was just all rubble. 
it was almost like we'd walked into a third world country or a war torn country and it was just the dirt or the ground was just dirt and there was just a couple little shacks there and that's where we went to gather the food from to take into this party and God spoke to me in this dream that we were taking food from the old place where God had us um, and was bringing it into this new place where God was prospering these people that had gathered together in this new place. And it was just uh, very clear to me that this new place was New Point Church and that there was, we were taking, God was taking the, the good things, the food from, from the old place into the new place where he was building up these people and making them prosperous and full of joy and hope and uh, healthy. And um, I shared that with Brett, and he was just like, it seems like it was a remnant that God had put together. I was like, that, that's exactly what the dream uh, was telling me. Amen. Thank you, bro. So, here's what I believe. I believe God had a plan for New Point Church long before any of us ever imagined it. I believe he has something he wants to do to restore and to strengthen and to revive and to rebuild a body that can then go out into a city and love them the way God loves us. That we can look and say, look what he did. Look how he restored me, my hope, my joy. That this would not be a place where there was any kind of division or any kind of uh, turmoil, but this would be a place marked by God's love. And anyone who comes here will see and know there is peace. There is strength. There is hope. And that they will be revived. And they will be strengthened. And as a church, we can then go into our city and we can send people into our world and bring that same love and that same hope. This vision is very simple. We must love God with all of our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength and everything that's in us. We must love God. Now, over the next several weeks, we're going to break these things down. But the question would be is if there are any barriers in your life that keep you from fully loving him, and there could be. There could be some barriers, maybe some things you've been through that would keep you from being completely open to letting God consume your whole life and to use you the way he wants to. There could be barriers. And I'm praying that every person that calls this place home in the next four weeks, that any barrier that would be in your way will be broken down and you will be free to love God like you've never loved him before. Amen? And I am praying that the next portion of that vision, that you will love his church. Not the Tuscany Event Center. That's not his church. It won't be a future building that we reside in. His church will be and has always been you. And when you come on Sunday or you come on Wednesday, that there is something inside of you that says, I got to get to one of my fellow church people because I got to love them. I need to encourage them. I need to find out what God's done in their life this week, that this will be a place where we love his church well. But not just here that we will also lead in loving his church around the city because his church isn't just New Point. Amen? Now, New Point is where you have been called, where God has placed you to love people here well, and whoever comes in the doors, God wants you to love them well and encourage them. But there are other churches all across the city people that make up other tribes, if you will. But we're all a part of the same team, amen? And so I want New Point Church to lead the way in encouraging and loving other bodies 
in this city. That we would say, if there's an opportunity to partner, we're going to partner. Just like this uh, one, uh, the, the garage, what, what do we call that? The garage, do one thing. How many churches are a part of that? Yes. There is strength in the body of Christ when we come together and love his church. Our student ministries are, are combining with other student ministries in the city. We're going to be combining with other youth ministries because we believe God has called us corporately as a body, and we're supposed to love his church individually, but as a whole, we are to lead the way. So we need to love God so whatever barrier would keep you from giving him your all, I pray you'll find it. And in Jesus' name, it will no longer be there, and you'll love him freely. Love God, love his church, love his world. He has called us as a people to go into the world and to preach the gospel, to take the good news wherever he opens the door. Trinidad, he opened that door, and we had young people respond and say, we're going. To me, there is nothing more exciting than somebody saying, wherever you send me, God, I will go. And I'm not going to let barriers stand in the way of going. Because we could say, ah, it's a lot of money to raise, but God did it, didn't he? And so if it's Kenya, wherever we're going, and in about three weeks, I'm going to show you all the things that God has done through this body of believers over the last few years and how we've been able to minister our community and our world, it's going to blow you away what God is doing and the lives are being changed because we say we're going to love his world. We're going to love the things he's created. And we're going to do it well. The book of Haggai chapter 1, verse 2 through 8 says this. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. The people are saying the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet. Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much but harvested little. You eat but you're not satisfied. You drink but you're still thirsty. You put on clothes but you can't keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in the pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. Then Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, and Jeshua, son of Jehazadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of God's people began to obey the message from the Lord their God. And when they heard the words of the prophet Haggai, whom the Lord their God had sent, the people feared the Lord. And then in Haggai, verse 13, the Lord's messenger gave the people this message from the Lord. I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord sparked the enthusiasm of Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and the enthusiasm of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the enthusiasm of the whole remnant of God's people. See, I believe that we can go through the motions of having what we say is a household of faith, but have no faith operating. Right? Isn't that what we call the church, the house of faith, the household of faith and prayer? And that's who we are. We're God's people. If you need something, come to God's people. We have faith, and we're going to pray for you. And then we ask, where is our fruit? Where are the things that we've planted? What, what's happening? And, and we read. It says, you've planted much but harvested little. Come on. I'm about ready to see a big harvest. How many are ready to see a return on the harvest? See, here's what I think is interesting, is even in that dream, you saw a lot of young people, but you also saw the champions that went before those young people, correct? Here's what I believe. I believe that, that the body of Christ is full of people 
who are going to do great things for the kingdom. It's not just about the young ones that are coming, but it's also about the young ones that are coming. That they need to be able to be used and encouraged to grow and flourish in their faith. But there has been a people that have prayed for years and years and years. God, move in your church. Move in the house. And those are, I believe, champions in the faith that they've lived 50 and 60 and 70 years saying, God, when are you going to show up in a great way? How many have believed God for a lot of years? You're in your 50s or 60s or 70s. You said, God, I'm praying for the church. I'm praying for God to move. I'm praying for some supernatural stuff. Champions in the faith. But it's about bringing us together. It's about bringing the remnant of God together to see great things take place. It's about sparking enthusiasm again. Anybody enthusiastic? I'm going to try that again. Because just so you know, that's on video. Anybody enthusiastic? Yes. No, what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for is the people that really believe God is up to something at New Point Church, that he is really up to something to use you to impact your city, to impact the world, to impact every place that we set our feet. Is there anybody that wants to see God do some great things once again in his body? Is there any enthusiastic people in the house? Are you ready? on Sunday morning to get up and say, I can't wait to get to the house to worship the God I love. I'm going to love him with all of my heart today. And I'm going to come together and rejoice with the church. And we're going to praise a God who is an awesome God. When I woke up this morning and I headed out, the sun started to come up. I was, I was just coming uh, through Indianola. And as I was coming through Indianola, it was about 5, I don't know, 5.15 or something. And, uh, I, I begin to see the, the, the sky just begin to light up. If you haven't seen the picture, you should go on to Facebook and, and see the pic that I, I posted. I actually had to pull over. I, I, I got out of Indianola, and I got down to the, the flat area there between Indianola and Des Moines, and I pulled over. I got up in the bed of my truck. I just started snapping pictures because it was amazing. And I thought, man, we serve this amazing God who loves us enough to paint the sky the way he paints the sky. That, that he cares about us enough to bless us in more ways than we can even imagine. We should love him like crazy. I was excited to get to church today because I just thought, you know what? I have this opportunity to hang out with a bunch of people that he's brought here, and we're going to enthusiastically love God. We're not going to just kind of, you know, tiptoe around loving God. We're, gonna, we're not just going to give a, a little tiny hand clap when we hand clap. Listen, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. That's what I'm, I'm just declaring over this household of faith right now till Jesus actually returns enthusiasm in Jesus' name. Come on. Enthusiasm in Jesus' name. If, if you feel like God wants you to do something, then do it enthusiastically. Because I believe he's calling a remnant. If you're here, I don't believe you're here by accident. I believe God has you here for a purpose. And that's to revive you and excite you about loving him. And when we do that, you're not going to walk through the city the same way. You're not going to see people go by you and just ignore it. You're going to begin to pray for them. You're going to begin to say, God, would you somehow show up? Break my heart for these people that you have created and that you love. Do you realize that he died for everyone, even the ones who have yet to come to him? He died for them, and he loves them when they go by you or when you're in a workplace with them or wherever you're at. He loves them desperately, and he wants you to have that same love. He's raising a remnant. I'm ready for a harvest. Are you ready for a harvest? Amen. Come on. I love it when that happens. I'm ready for a harvest. God, do that. Lord, I don't want to come to church and just eat a little meal and not be satisfied. 
happens every Sunday. Somebody walks in to a house of faith, and they get just a little bite. They didn't really come to eat. I'm telling you, Thanksgiving's not here yet, but when it gets here, I mean, generally a few months out, I'm already ready for turkey and stuffing and potatoes and gravy and cranberry sauce and come on, somebody. I mean, I I begin to sense it because for days I know that I will eat what's left over. I I remember as a kid, I used to laugh at my dad and, and the older folk in the family because Thanksgiving would roll around And all the food would come out, and they would eat, and we would all eat. And the young ones, we would immediately head outside to play tackle football. I don't know how we did that. We just did. Because now, I would throw up everywhere. And I remember walking into the living room, and I would see some of the older ones uh, camped out. All of a sudden, they're, they're pushing back in the recliner. They pop that button. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. And they're, they're just sitting there, oh, I've eaten too much. And they just fall asleep and enjoy the rest of the afternoon because they were ready to eat. Oh, isn't it time that the house of faith comes ready to eat? Oh, I, I, isn't it time that we show up? And we say, whatever else is occupying my mind at the time, I'm going to focus on eating right now. And I'm going to eat everything I can get. I'm going to digest it. And when it's over, I'm just going to rest in the Lord. Come on, isn't it time that we don't just get a little bite and walk out unsatisfied? He wants you to be satisfied. He wants you to be overflowing and filled. That's the kind of church I want us to be. I want us to be ready to eat So we're satisfied. I want us to be able to clothe ourselves in compassion and love that we would never be cold, that we would never be fearful, but the love of God would clothe us and cover us. So no matter where we go in this world, we sense that he is there and we're not alone. Oh God, would you do that? There's the other side of that. It says, And your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. Ah, man. I'm waiting for the day that the body of Christ really gets this thing about not being in debt to every person in America and every corporation and everything that takes all of our cash. I'm waiting for that day when we say, you know what? Nothing else gets in the way. We're going to put our treasure where our heart is, right? And if it's the kingdom, that we will be a people that says, God, use me. Use me to be a blessing to the kingdom. If it's the kids going to Trinidad or anybody else, God, wouldn't it be awesome just to say, I'll write a check for that whole thing for that student to go to Trinidad. How many would like, I would love to write that check by myself right now. I can't do it yet, but I will one day. I'm praying that as a church, that our change doesn't fall through. I believe God is birthing something in this place. I believe the more we reach out and we bless the world that we live in, the more we become a generous people. You say, well, I just don't have much now. If you won't give much when you don't have much, you're not going to give much when you do. That we will say, God, whatever you've given me, I want to use it to the best of my ability. I want to be a steward of that, and I want to plant it into the kingdom. Oh, Lord, let this house Be a generous house that nothing can get in our way, that when God asks us to do something, we can do it. When he asks us to build another church in Kenya or wherever he wants us to do that, we can raise an offering right now and it'd just be a done deal. You need to know that the $7,000 that we raised last Christmas that not only built that church, but it also put in a well God stretched that in ways I couldn't imagine because I've built other churches that cost about 13000 And you think, well, that's not very much money. It's really not. Not when 200 people come and, and then you have water that reaches 1,000 people in the area. It's not really that much because, like I said, we've put in grease traps before that cost 9000 Man, we've got this messed up. 
But Lord, whenever you ask us to do something, let us be a generous people. And God, would you eliminate the debt in our life? How many want to be debt free? Oh, no, any, anything to anybody except the love that you have that God says you should give them. That's the kind of debt I want to carry, just the love for people. God, let us be generous. So the Lord sparked the enthusiasm of the whole remnant of God's people, and they began to work on the house of their God, the Lord of heaven's armies. Haggai, chapter 2, verse 2 through 9. Speak now to Zerubbabel. And to Joshua, I'm going to kind of move through this quick. Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? Yet now be strong, declares the Lord. Who is among you that have seen the former? Now, I'm not just talking about this church, but there are some people who've been around for a long time. How many have been around for a while? You've been around this people for a while. And you've seen some things, and you're like, oh, Lord, we just remember how it used to be. But see, God is doing a new thing. And some of you have never been a part of this house of faith, but you are now. But you remembered something. There was a day that you thought, man, if it could just be like that again. How many have had a time in your life where you just thought, if it could just be like that again? Guess what? It's going to be better. It's going to be better This is what the scripture says. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. According to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Fear not, for thus says the Lord of hosts, Yet once more in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord. He owns it all, folks. How many know he owns it all? He's going to shake things up. I believe there is a day coming that he's going to shake things up in a way that the body of Christ is going to rise up again and be a place of blessing that will reach into our communities and our world. He's going to shake things up, and, and the treasure's coming back to the household of faith in Jesus' name. It's not something we're going to wait on everybody else to provide. God wants us to provide for people. He wants us to love and care for people. And then it says this, The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. In this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. You are his church, and he wants to give you peace, and he wants to bless you, and he wants you to know that the latter days, the the days that are coming are going to be greater than what happened before. Are you ready for greater days? Amen. Are you ready for something that could change lives? Yes. Are we ready to reach out to our community and believe that other people are going to be touched? Yes. Is this going to be a place where his peace resides? Yes. The vision of New Point Church is simple. It's love God legitimately. That every person in this room, every person who calls this place home, that you leave any sort of religion behind and you say, I want a relationship with the master. I want a relationship with the God who painted that sky this morning. Man, when I stood up there and I looked at it, I was like, you are so awesome, God. And I've got a relationship with you. You are the creator You've got it in control, and I love you. God, let me love people, regardless of what people might do to me. How many have had some issues in your life with people that have done some stuff to you? That should be about every hand. Come on, you're not, you're not fooling me. 
You've had some things in your life go down where people began to be the focus of your pain and your past and your stuff, and you didn't let it go. You get a big enough love for God and realize that his opinion about you is the only thing that ever matters. What God says about you now is all that matters. And if you got your father's approval, what can anybody do to you? Absolutely nothing. It wasn't you who brought me here, brothers. You didn't send me here, even though you threw me into the pit, even though you might have left me for dead, even though I was wrongly accused. All of those things that you may have faced, but God brought you here. That a remnant might be saved. There's somebody in your life that needs a remnant church that understands who God is, that has God on the line. There's somebody in your life that needs you, a remnant church, to rise up so someone might be saved, so someone might find shelter. Are you ready to be a remnant church? It's not just about the people that used to go here. It's every last one of us are a remnant church that God wants to use that some might be saved. What if just everybody here was able to minister to one person effectively in the next year? Come on, let's just talk about that. Well, this room won't be big enough. Yeah, what, what if we minister to two? Well, we'll have to have two services and then three services. Why? Not because it's about us becoming a mega church. There's enough mega churches I want us to be a church that has such a passion and love for God that we love his people well, and they come and they find healing so then we can go love the world and more people can be healed. That's the point. And even if you would say, well, Pastor Brett, I just love the size of our church right now. Listen, I've heard it all, folks. Well, we don't want to be a big church. Well, if your reason for not being a big church, and, and by the way, we're a good-sized church still, but if, if the reason for not becoming a big church is because we just like the size of ours now and we're comfortable, then we're missing the point, folks. Because if there's one person that has not sensed the love of Christ, if there's one person that isn't free, if there's one person that hasn't come inside from the barren wilderness and found peace, then we're not big enough. We're not big enough. So let us, his people, Love God well. Say, love God. Let his people love his church. Say, love his church. And let his people love his world. Say, love his world. Are you ready for that? Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to break those things down. Loving God, loving his church, and loving his world. Over these next three weeks, it's going to be exciting. I, pr I pray that you are filled to overflowing. We're going to become a people that are a generous people, a loving people, a passionate people. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Ushers, would you come? We're going to take up our tithing offering. I'm going to close with this video as you give. This, even though this is an older video, uh, I don't know if there's been a song sung like this in a while. I mean, this, they killed this. It's called Let Freedom Ring. Um, and every time I listen to it, I get chills because of, of just the power of the message. And I pray that wherever you go today and tomorrow, all the masses of people that you're going to see that are going to stare out of sky waiting for the fireworks to show up, that you will look at those masses of people and say, God, how can we reach them? How can we love them? How can we serve him? Amen? Father, as we give right now, and we pray over this household of faith, that we will all have a heart for the house, that we will have your heart, that we will love you, love your church, and love your world, that we will be enthusiastic every week, every day till you return, 
that we will never be looked at as a body of believers that are boring, but excited about all the blessing that you have bestowed upon us, that we could be a blessing. Thank you for this gift that we're about ready to receive from each of your church, your remnant church, that you're going to use to impact the world we live in. And as we give and we give joyfully, I pray, God, your blessing will be upon it and blow us away with all the things you're about to do to build your house. In Jesus' name, amen.